Greetings, my fellow friend, Love Shopping Thinkers. This is LL3's Lewis Podcast. My name is Craig. Trans, we from the beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida. And today's date is Thursday, June 21st, 2018, the first day of summer. Woo, yeah. And it's a little bit cloudy right now. And the uh, possible thunderstorms may be heading our way. And I'm in the heart of downtown Fort Lauderdale, just uh, kicking back. So I'm just in a little light area, and hopefully it won't rain on me. Nah, I'll be protected. It should be okay. Yeah, so I, I love it when um, everyone's still focused on what's going on with the illegal immigration issue. I know Donald Trump's on executive order not to separate the parents. But uh, the whole thing is we got to find out how we more actually went solo. Okay, that's been a big key. And if these parents actually have merit. Okay, if it's official, they got parents, but sometimes they have to go through the whole scene, uh, scene process. It's part of the immigration laws. And, of course, they all want to point the finger at Donald Trump. It's his fault, his responsibility and all that. But the people in the Congress should look, take a look and need to look in the mirror as well, including clowns like Nancy Pelosi and warmongering demonad Lindsey Graham. Yeah, the dynamic duo, I call them, right? Huey and Dewey. <laughs> That's just some of the examples he has at the District of Criminals. So, yeah, and um, so I'm going to be talking about that. And it's interesting to uh, spin to this from a, from a person that wrote this in here from the Freedom Post, freedomoutpost.com. And I just printed this out. Unfortunately, I don't, have, I don't have the person's name. But it's really good. I'm, what I'm going to do, even though I print these out, I am going to post these footnotes on here as soon as possible. And this one's entitled the Obama Era Jade Home Connection to the Current Illegal Immigration Policy. And it says here, on the surface of the, la- the latest leg- illegal immigration debate between leftists and administration looks like yet another issue progressives are trying to undermine progress by done- being done by the president. No one should, should be surprised by the crackdown on the legals across the across entering the country, especially since it was one of the major campaign promises Donald Trump made before getting elected. When it comes to the separation of children from their families, there is nothing new today that was not being done during the Obama reign. Yeah, tell that to a worshiper that, no, not my man, not my Lord and Savior. Of course, in 2013, Obama began bringing into the U.S. literally over hundreds of thousands of people, mainly below age 21. They were bus flown and met at the U.S. border with Mexico by the Department of Homeland Security under the direction of Obama to do so. Since most of them were adolescents or older, older teenagers, they could, be, they could not be set free. Thus, Obama ordered various military bases to house these two children. And there's links on here, too, so you can really check it out and, and make your own judgment. The surge of the children into the U.S. from various countries south of the border was said to be the result of economics, high crime rates, and actual threats from organized crime entities. Another excuse used by the Obama government was to bring them here to find their families already in the U.S. Thus the idea that separating the children from their parents as being something new done by only by the Trump administration that's absurd since we really have no idea whether the children brought here during the Obama, Obama reign were intentionally separated from their parents by the U.S. government at that time or not. We have only what little information the government told us then, which was not very much, considering that the fact that Obama wanted to keep as much of this situation as secret as possible. Of course, because he's, he's um, bending over the New World Order. He's a typical bend over Bob. Go figure that, right, my friends? What many do not realize is today's policy separating underaging siblings from their parents once they cross the border illegally into the U.S. seems to be planned by planned event by the U.S. government going all the way back to the domestic military exercises known as Jade Helm in 2015. Many remember the military taking over several Walmart locations, mainly in Texas, during the Jade Helm exercises. This, along with the federal government grabbing the millions of acres of land during the Obama years, speaks volumes in the government's plan to be able to handle millions of people. Since Obama planned to have more, have over a million Muslim refugees brought into the U.S. over a short period of time, along with the hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants coming in, one can understand the reason the feds had to have Walmart stores and 
so much land as he needed housing for the millions they planned to bring in. Despite President Trump signing executive order suspending, suspending Syrian refugees from entering the U.S. for 120 days on January 6, 26, 2017, while security measures were reviewed, the U.S. still imported 110,000 refugees from Syria and various other countries into the U.S. in 2011. Up from 85,000 the previous year, these, number follow, these numbers follow Obama's projections of the expected amount of refugees permitted to come to the U.S. Of course, as with the number of illegal immigrants entering our country, the feds downplayed the actual number, which always end up to be more than quadruple their stated number. What we seem to have here with their illegal immigration situation today is some very good actors on the left accusing the Trump administration of being cruel and insensitive with separating children from their families once they cross the Mexican border into the U.S. when in fact their idol Obama did the same thing for years during this time in power. What do they, what they do not want to admit is, to is the fact that today's illegal immigration picture is one that follows the Obama plan on dealing with the influx of illegals to cool carbon copy. President Trump, on the other hand, is following along with it by detaining illegal immigrants at the border and separating children from their apparent families, since no one can know if they if the children really belong to the illegals who say they are their parents or they are separated until can be until that can be verified along with other background findings. The bottom line is both the left and the Trump administration seem to be following along with plan of action going back to Jade Helm which paved the way for the thousand, thousand housing needed for such a huge influx of illegal immigrants and refugees, all of which seems to be a planned event. In any case, neither inside in D.C. is really interested in solving the illegal immigration problem or cares about the children involved. If they were, there would be no detention no, and separation after illegally coming into the U.S. alone and immediate deportation by the U.S. Border Patrol on the spot. And that's absolutely correct. And even, um, I was uh, checking out, uh, I was like listening to a CNN report by one agent named uh, Kurt Cabrera. And he talked about when many of them go across the river and so over the Rio Grande, that's considered illegal. They, they, all they gotta do is hit the port of entry. So what's so hard about that? And they wanna blame it on, of course, the reporter from CNN wants to talk about the Trump administration and say, hey, Congress makes the laws. And he's actually correct because Uniform and naturalization laws, immigration laws, is from Congress. Under Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution. But these bozos in Washington believe you folks are a bunch of complete morons. So they, they assume you're just peasants and you're not going to say a damn thing about it. But you know what? They're full of crap. Okay, Regardless is in there. That's why I'm not afraid to call out these clowns. Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, and... And, and Lindsey Graham, and of course, Insane McCain, even though I never wish the man any ill for brain cancer, but he's part of the, he's part of the problem as well. So this is one thing I always look at, even with the whole Jade Helm perspective. Uh, it's been talked about from many other uh, news sources, even InfoWars, like them or not, they, they were spot on. Uh, all you gotta do is verify everything, look it up, and, and, and print out stuff, what's going on, and do your own homework. You don't have to have people think for you, you can do it yourself, make your own judgments. So this is why this whole illegal immigration issue has been a burden for a good period of time. And, and I'll see many of these are just pawns of the game, all right? And I'm just wondering, too, how many of them can be human tra can be um, stock or, or, or products of human trafficking. That child human trafficking is a big thing in this country as well. So you have to look at everything across the board. And one thing for sure, even John Whitehead brought up, he wasn't really crazy about the separation, which is understandable. I'm not going to argue with the man, but it can happen to the citizens itself, rather born, natural born or naturalized. It's called the domino effect. But the whole thing is, you know, someone wants to point their finger, but don't have the courage to look in the mirror. They could take your club of Rome propaganda and shove it up their rear ends. It's a real catchy thing about this, and I'm glad you know. I will try to see things a lot more broader than what it is. That's why I tell all my friends how deep does the rabbit hole go. And you know, I'm gonna this next one here. Um, that's a commentary. And the next one here came from AmericaFreePress.com. 
This one's entitled Geno Haspel's New Vision for CIA. And this is by Philip Gordali. It says here, former Intel Intel expert Philip Gordali hopes a new CIA director, Gina Hospital, will reduce questionable activities. In spite of her pro-torture responses during her recent confirmation hearings, she did put her foot down once opposing expansion of assassination by drone program. Ah, some rough edges, but at least she may have some, have some, shed some light, right? All right, well, let's check this out here. And it says here, after a brushing, a, co- a confirmation flight, one wonders if newly approved Central Intelligence Agency Director Gina Haspel will have to support, public political support, to put her own stamp on how the agency is structured and operates. Insider notes that though she was an acting director for only two months, she did little more than continue the changes made by her predecessor, Mike Pompeo, who had been in charge of the agency for 15 months. The 17 the past 17 years have been a major change in how the CIA is organized. The Cold War agency was basically divided into two major intelligence components and included an administrative structure as well as a scientific and technical division that had their own independent functions but also worked to support intelligence operations. An analyst, to put it simply, the agency consisted of one half that collected information and another half that analyzed the information collected, the questions components itself divided into geographical regions with a producer of intelligence, which was then processed by the analyst before going on the, on, the, on the consumers, which consisted of the White House, Congress, and other agencies within the government, what a need to know that gave them access to finished intelligence reports. The principal consumer of intelligence and the CIA's boss w- was... It is the president of the United States. Within the system of producer consumers that were a number of staffs and centers that dealt with issues like terrorism, drug trafficking, and nuclear proliferation. They were regarded as global threats that defied the defied neat compartmentation compartmentation into geographic areas. The counterterrorism Center, or CTC, which included representatives from the Secret Service, FBI, DIA, NSA, and Pentagon, also incorporated analysts into the process, which was a major break for the principle that analysis and case officers should never mix the lest the final product be contaminated by operational or political consideration. Post 9 11, the allegations that the clues to the hijackers have been mis- missed due to excessive comp- compartmentation within the various intelligence and law enforcement agencies meant that the idea of fusion centers like CTC became more popular. It also meant that there were a great demand for officers with paramilitary training to send places like Afghanistan and eventually Iraq. Spies who had been trained to slowly and carefully to to develop Russian diplomats for recruitment became less relevant. Operations in places like Pakistan became brutal with low-level agents working for money treated like disposable garbage. When CIA contract officer Raymond Davis was arrested by Pakistani police in 2011 after he shot dead two motorcyclists who may or may not been have been Pakistani intelligence officers, it emerged that he was part of an armed team providing security for meetings for Pakistani agents. Agents would be picked off the street, stuffed behind the car seat with the blindfold so they would not know where they were going taken to a second car where they would be interrogated before they would be paid again and again stuck behind the seat blindfolded and taken to a spot where they could be dropped off as of as of as of a model as a as a model of CIA agent handling it was not exactly old school Inviolably, the methodology of CIA operations involving the recruitment and disbriefing of agents referred to as a tradecraft began to be forgotten as older officers retired and the training of new officers emphasized new skills. The agency pretty much began to forget how to spy and how to deal with an untested agent, leading to catastrophics like the 2009 suicide bombings of seven CIA officers at Camp 
Chapman near Kost in Afghanistan, where the agency base was run by an officer who lacked the relevant experience that and a major security mistake. Meanwhile, more and more of the annual budget was going to the paramilitary paramilitaries who provide the physical protection of the growing number of CIA sites and also protection for meetings. The transition to a different agency structure accelerated under President Barack Obama and his director John Berman. Berman or Brennan, excuse me, Brennan favored replacing the former geographic structure with more fusion teams that would include analysts and representatives from other government agencies. Many at CIA, many at CIA believe that Brennan had a particular animus against agency operations as he had entered CIA hoping to become a cause o- case officer but had washed out but had washed out of the training course. Brennan pushed ahead with his fusion program and also promoted Greg Vogel to be head of the Calcium Services one described as operations. Vogel was a military and not a case officer and inside the CIA it was widely regarded as a final insult to the agency's spies. Haspel, who briefly held the position of acting director of the Calisthen Service, was an integral part of the Brennan regime and generally went along with his preferences. Nice lightning storm there, right? Ha <laughs> ha! Through a source report that she did dig in her heels at one point when there was a, when the when there was a proposed proposal to greatly expand the assassination by drone program, if she did that, it is to credit and perhaps an indication that she does not have limits in terms of what she would do in support of the White House. As a result of the 2016 election, there was inviolably change at the top of the agency coming into the CIA that no longer knew how to spy. President Donald Trump's new director, Mike Pompeo, Move quickly to reverse many of the decisions made by Brennan, but he also brought his own set of likes and dislikes. Officers who worked directly with Pompeo reported that he was controlling, insisting on support among senior officers for whatever policies the White House was promoting. See, it's interesting there about how he's promoting. This did not go well at CIA where officers prided themselves on being politically neutral, with their only guideline being. To, be, to report developments honestly and analyze objectively. Pompeo also institutionalized greater emphasis on Iran as a prime enemy, creating a task force to address it. And now there is Miss Hospo. Ins- insiders believe she will move slowly and cautiously, but will continue in the direction set by Pompeo. That means somewhat of a reversion of the, to the traditional agency model, which prevailed when she was being trained and during her assignments and given given her grilling by the by the senate she will presumably very cautious about engaging in questionable activities as a former case officer i would have to think that is a good thing traditional spine hopefully without the renditions black sites and the torture well we'll hope that's the case correct absolutely and this one and this and um that's one of the things you have to really uh, look at, because if you study what CIA does and information has been declassified, you'd be surprised at the stuff they got involved with. And um, that's one of the good example of what's going on with this mass exodus of illegal immigration coming from the Central American region. A lot of drug wars, um, battles, government, uh, government. Um, government hostility towards the critical thinkers and all that. It could be all be United States could be the CIA could be meddling with, with their affairs for all we know, but based on past history it has facts. It's been going on long before the Central Intelligence Agency as well. But that's why you have to always say, hey, let's cut out the meddling, get out of foreign these foreign entanglements, let the folks organically take care of themselves and handle it from there. But, you know, like I said, for Miss Hospital, let's just hope it simmers down. Okay? I support intelligence, but not in an an, uh, imperialistic perspective. And I recommend folks to go out to read Blowback by... uh, Oh, man. 
the Hammers Johan, uh, Johansson, Chalmers Johansson. Yeah, I mean, I could be it. But definitely check that book out. Because if you see what's going on now, if you know about this country, you got to study the past because it's today's greatest teacher. When you get these fluctuations of meddling with people's affairs, it's a thing called blowback. And what we're seeing right over here it is a good possible example. It blew back in our faces, just like what happened to Benghazi. All right, when they over when they overthrew the Gaddafi government, it could be considered blowback. So, like I said, you always look at need to look over the bigger picture. All right, this next one here came from same same post from Freedom Post. No, Sons of Liberty originally was on Freedom Post, and um, this one's in. Title. U.S. Conference of Mayors called for more gun compensation legislation. The United States Conference of Mayors passed several resolutions last week that called for more gun confiscation legislation following all the debate about guns after several shootings despite the fact that government has never been given the authority to restrict or regulate arms. Part of the hypocrisy of the U.S. Conference of, the, of Mayors is that it actually pushed to a fringe on law-abiding citizens by right? reclaiming that's consistent with the Second Amendment. Can we give my penile microphone for that? Here you go. It's my penile microphone's in your mouth, and don't worry, it's not sexual harassment. For example, the organization writes in support of David Hogg's Never Again movement. From my soft, damp, soft hand. Don't you take my knock sacks that's not not covered. P that's covered. Please don't do that. That's not fair. That glam boy. Whereas the U.S. Conference of Mayors has a 50-year history of formally adapting and aggressively promoting strong policies to reduce gun violence, all consistent with the support of the Second Amendment to the Constitution. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire, bend over for sure. That's what happened when you bend over for the New World Order. For those Uncle Tom and Angel Mamas were in that conference of mayors. I'm just wondering if uh, the mayor of Fort Lauderdale was there. Dean Trantillis. That'd be a good question I could ask. Hey, how's it feel being an Uncle Tom to the New World Order, sir? How dare you say that to me? But I will continue on here. And just what kind of policies are we talking about, according to the mayor? Something... The regulation of gun sales and dealers including limiting the number of guns a person may purchase in a single transaction or in a month or other specific period of time. Banning replica handguns, increasing inspections of licensed gun dealers, and targeting and holding responsible gun dealers who break the law by knowingly selling guns to straw purchases. It sounds like the whole song and dance. Hi, we need to do the same thing over and over and over again. Precisely. Banning assault weapons and large capacity magazines, including and restraining a strength hold, effective ban on military style weapons such as AK 47 and the component parts, and ban large capacity ammunition feed feeding devices and the importation of all large capacity ammunition clips. Supporting local efforts to reduce and combat gun violence, including opposing concealed carry reciprocity policies and legislation that will circumvent the sea policy to establish to protect residents. <laughs> Oh, yeah, tell me the police are obligated to protect me as an individual. Prove me if you dare. Providing local governments and law enforcement officials access to ATF gun trace data. Opposed to standing ground or shoot first laws and urging state legislators that have adapted such laws to repeal them. And encouraging mayors to take executive action to combat gun violence and illegal use of and trafficking of guns. So stand your ground. Help me, underdog. Help me. Put your hands in the air. Fight crime. Put your hands in the air. Sweet pie, purebred syndrome. Wonder wussy. Wussies on parade. Protecting young people, including opposing, pro opposing proposals to allow teachers and other non-law enforcement, non-security personnel to carry firearms in K-12 through schools. So, we want your kids to be dumb, stagnant, and happy. You want them to be ignorant, doctrines, and little numbers. Raising youth handgun ban from 18 to 21 years of age. So like I said, if you're old enough to vote, you're, old not, you're not old enough to handle a farm because they say so. They're lawyers. They have dish pan hands. Ba uh, banning juvenile possession of same automatic weapons, rifles, and holding gun owners criminally liable when children gain access to improperly and stored guns. Protecting domestic violence victims, including prohibiting convicted domestic violence crimes, 
or subject to final domestic violence restraining orders from requiring or possessing firearms and requiring prohibited domestic abusers to turn the firearms in they already own. So right there, many of this here is saying, no due process, we'll take the damn things. I call it treason. Here is how, how any of this is consistent with the support of the Second Amendment is anyone's guess. I think they throw that language in to cover for the fact that they are attacking it, attacking it head on and attacking the rights of the people. Yeah, the natural born rights. How does any of this stop gun violence? It doesn't. What it does do is a fringe on the rights of teachers, law abiding citizens who want to purchase several guns, which they will use lawfully sized with criminals against law abiding citizens, as opposed to standing your ground on other measures written specifically to protect people who would normally be victims of crime. Banning semi automatic weapons don't stop crime either, as we pointed out before, and the statistics available for anyone to see that gun violence didn't go down one bit during the decade of the Clinton Feinstein assault weapons ban. These geniuses all support an, an enactment of comprehensive background checks, ban the sale of bump stocks and related devices, and prevent the army of teachers in schools. Yes, so when it's necessary, be sitting ducks. You're expendable. That's what we're saying to the school teachers. Again, this will not do. This will not. This will do nothing to stop criminals with guns. Why? Because they won't follow your unconstitutional, unlawful laws in the first place. On top of that, the criminal mayors may want to, const wants to constitute, institute red flag laws. The U.S. Conference of Mayors registered its strong support for extreme risk protection order laws and urges both state and federal governments to enact such laws, the group wrote. They are in fully support of violating the Fifth Amendment rights of other law-abiding citizens based on merely the fact that someone claims that a family member is a harm to themselves or others, even though they have not committed a crime that this is the Trump take the guns first and due process mantra. Guns.com reported on some of the statements made by some of these mayors. This is one here. Karen Freeman Wilson, mayor of Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana is not a pretty looking, pretty paradise in that town, okay? And chairwoman of the conference criminal and social justice committee said gun-related tragedies ripped families and communities apart. Positive like background checks on all gun sales and red flag laws save lives. It is simple as that, Freeman Wilson said. The U.S. Conference of Mayors will continue doing everything in our power to keep our community safe so that the children and families are able to live free for the fear of being gunned down. Does that include the government itself? Sap. St. Louis Mayor Linda Cruzen said the new resolution show mayors will lead the way in solving our gun violence crisis. We wouldn't be doing our jobs as mayors if we weren't focusing on gun violence, an issue threatening the public safety of every community, big and small. She said our bipartisan network of mayors knows how to work together and compromise on policies that save lives. If only our partners in Congress did the same. Blame game. It's everyone but you. Blame game. Try to find someone to screw. That's right. Witch hunting 101. Gun control groups, including Every Town for Gun Safety and Mayors Against Illegal Guns, praise the conference for reaffirming its support for stricter regulations. Mayors on the front lines of America's gun violence crisis, so it's no surprise. They're also leading the charge to pass common sense life saving laws, said Every Town President John Finblatt. It's our time for our leaders in Washington to follow the lead of America's mayors, public safety over NRA priorities. No, it's not NRA priorities. They're my natural born rights. Okay, chump. Yeah, look at these Uncle Toms. I call them Uncle Toms and Angel Mamas to the state. Huh, we bend over. We get respect more. We pull down pencil. This master may have another. <clears throat> he may have another. You know, they, they, they get so climatic. None of these statements can be backed by the facts. The facts refute their arguments. But beyond that, the Second Amendment recognizes that the right to keep and bear arms is a right given to us by our Creator, not permission we gain from government. 
So while they tell you they support the Second Amendment and their and that their unlawful policies are consistent with it, nothing could be further from the truth. If you buy into this, you probably think places like Chicago, Illinois, are among the safest places to live in the U.S. when the opposite is true. What can I say? Sovereign Immunity Tort Liability Act. I got you to look it up. Trust me, you'd be surprised. Look it on your state level, okay? Like in Florida, 768.28, Sovereign Immunity and Tort Liability Act. That's Florida statute. And public employees are not obligated to protect you or other ways not liable for certain things. So technically, the police aren't obligated to protect you as individuals. But you want to trust these mayors, leave their hands, leave their security in the hands of the government, then you're a bunch of dup punk, dupe, and swindled. Hopefully, while you folks remember what happened at Waco, the Waco massacres by government scumbags. I'm not saying David Koresh was a great guy himself, all right? But even though, like I said, they said he was a molester and all that later on. But you got, but it's okay, but it's okay to kill him with many other innocent people, women, especially children, right? Pure blasphemy. If you buy that hype, then you're a bunch of douchebags anyway that have less, less, you're less manly than Bannock Arnold. And even to the women there as well. I know a lot of ladies out there who are pro fire or pro self defense will back minutes 100%. Because I know one thing for sure. That even though it's a hot button, because it comes to my natural burn rush, I call all you douchebags out. And I, sometimes I like to use these certain language that forgive me, but I do this once in a while. I stand on principles, my friends. Alright? Even when it comes to free speech, you want to come my free speech? I'm going to give you peanut butter. I'm going to call you a tree this quack. I'm not afraid to call these people out. I've done it before. They hate down a lot of these projects that don't like it, but I don't give a damn. Because I stand for principles. It's not a personal thing. It's principle. Because if they can do it to me, they can do it to any of us. Think about that. All right. Do one more here. It's from the Freedom Post. And it's entitled, Asserting Your Rights Produces a Masterpiece of Liberty While Ignorance Brings Slavery. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a civilization, it expects that what never was and never will be. Let me quote Thomas Jefferson again. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was, never will be. When Jefferson, the principal author of the, of the American Declaration of Independence, wrote these words, he was expressing a truth that relatively few Americans appreciate today. You see an elected or appointed official at local, state, and national or national level is required to take an oath to defend the Constitution of both his state and the United States. His job, then, is to follow his oath. Fair enough. But what about the rest of us? What is your job as citizens of our state or of the states united? Our job is to make sure that office holders follow their oath so we can remain the land of the free as you probably know by now, my family's mission is to make sure that the foundational reasons for American liberty, liberty are taught and known. Almost every American I encounter knows that America is different than the rest of the world. America generally loves America, generally love America because we have amazing liberties, prosperity, opportunity, peace, education, entertainment, access, and infrastructure. The troubling part about this love of a country is that it is, for the most part, ignorant of any foundational reasons for the aforementioned. Recently, my wife and I traveled to Colorado where I had a privilege to present to a number of individuals at the massive Colorado Homeschool Convention. Later, I brought some of my students from the convention to visit a champion of God-given rights, Jack Phillips, on the Masterpiece Cake Shop. We should all, we should all be so grateful that this man didn't just sit back and eagerly enjoy his liberty in, in America. When discriminated against, Jack stood and endured the war warfare to preserve, his, to preserve liberty for his family and future generations. Jack understood that one does not have a right to divest themselves of God-given rights. As a matter of fact, by asserting and victoriously defending his God-given right to practice his artistic expression within the moral boundaries of God's word, he helped de defend all of our God-given rights. He regards what you think. He has those rights. And I, talk, I was talking about that in my past show. Article 2, Section 3, he yeah, have natural born rights. And Section 28, same, thing, same article, Section 28, enumerated rights. You can look it up in the Colorado Constitution, Article 2 to be exact. Now I'll continue on here. 
But how can you do, how can you or I do this is we don't know what Constitution declares or what it means. If we don't know the rules, then how can we tell if they are being followed? If we don't know these essential elements of citizenship, what use to be called civics, then it is difficult to object the new to, to direct affronts against our liberty. In short, if we are ignorant, it is not long before we won't be free. Make no mistake, our American liberty is simply the blessing of Almighty God and the byproduct of carefully following his laws, which are the formula of the prosper, for a prosperous individual, family, church, and civil government. Let's do Let's do what. Let's do away with ignorance and learn our Bible and Constitution, the true ingredients of the masterpiece we call liberty. Schedule the event or learn more about your Constitution with Jack McCauley in the Institute on the, Con the Constitution and receive your free gift. There's a thing on that, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think, and it doesn't mean be a Christian or like that. It's just you know when you look, study the Bible, look at it as a as books of multiple books, and some of the. Um, Proceedings, like even trial proceedings, for example, answered to prove guilty. Grand jury came from ancient Judea. Well, so, so they get that from that. So, so it's not, you have to be a religious man to appreciate it, but you got to look at things in a, in a bigger perspective. But the whole thing is, my friends, we all have these sovereign, we do have these um, obligations on keeping the government on their toes. If you trust them, then you're being a fool. That is irrelevant and unacceptable. What I tell people, if you read the Declaration of Independence, the main objective, you never trust the new government. If, if the goal is usurp, it is your duty to go and take it or, or take them down or create a new government. That's what the southern states did to start to create the Confederate States of America. And is that because it's, oh, it's only slavery? Nope. I know I might be repeating myself, but I have to remember we all have differences in that issue. But the fact is, it's a lot bigger than what, what, it, what how it became. We gotta study these areas. Remember, the past is today's greatest teacher. So um, I always like to tell folks out there: go do your homework, share this information, be proactive in your own and your own um, own methods. I'm not gonna try you guys to tell you how to do things, but share, like sharing information is a great thing to do, and not to be one dimensional, be stagnant, and look at everything in a fine line. How the supersede? How how does it mean? Um, how these uh, proposals are constitutional on a federal or state level? Because even a lot of these pe folks in in, the, in, in these uh, state and local go and local governments, they have an oath to protect and defend both the U.S. And, and their state constitutions. Example: Florida, Article Two, Section Five, other state constitution. Colorado, Article Twelve, Section Eight. Let's give you guys some examples, okay? And uh, that's one of the reasons why you should know these things, know these documents, and share them with others. I'm still reading the Florida Constitution now and then. I don't know it by heart, but it's called practice. Practice makes perfect, and you can better yourself, and be, you become a teacher and a rabbi and share this with everybody else. And you know what? Trust me. Then things, then the like-minded people can multiply. Don't be a her conformist. Be a freedom lover and a sovereign thinker, okay? All right, my friends, that's all for now. I thank everyone for listening, but feel free to download and share throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you're something that's interesting, man, I want to check out, whatever you do, please address the correspondence to decorum. What decorum? You can hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, Speaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, Minds.com, FutureNet.club, Proton, or Patreon.com, forward slash look with three or three eyes if you want to be a... A donor, or patron, that'd be great. You hit me a gab, yours, one way, or buddies list. All right, I'm all on there. So you hit my search, hit the search engine, local look number three. You probably find me everywhere. All right. In addition, you can email me at local look number three at gmail.com or your encrypted ones, either especially with the pro time mail account. We do all my encryptions on that with that with that uh, mailing list. The, the mailing account is look at luck number zero three at protonmail.com. Ooh, yeah. All right, my friends. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.